Hey there, this is K4A, Knowledge for All Educational Videos channel. We are continuing with making tutorials, we are continuing with learning game development, Game Maker Studio, and in this video today we are going to try to learn how and when to use drag and drop block jump to point in Game Maker Studio 2. So this is a new kind of series, uh, series where we are going to learn Game Maker Studio 2 blocks, drag and drop blocks, how to use them and there are lots of those in uh, Game Maker Studio so there this is going to be a long series of videos and uh, I hope we'll make something uh, useful at the end, some kind of game or something like that um, maybe not complete but at least you will uh, uh, learn how to use those blocks in a step-by-step -step approach uh, from video to video so even if you don't watch all of those or don't watch uh, them in continuity or you can um, learn something useful and use them uh, any way you want so um, I have made the big pause yeah three months uh, with uh, making videos so I hope this time it will be better and faster and lots of scratch videos so probably accent will be more on Game Maker Studio now I will uh, leave a link to manual of uh, YoYo Games manual Game Maker Studio 2 manual where you can go to uh, drag and drop and uh, learn about it on your own if you don't want to wait for my tutorials to come out so uh, drag and drop is one option in uh, Game Maker Studio for coding, that's a visual scripting language, that's a visual coding like Scratch, something like that. Uh, more complex of course, because Game Maker is more complex and you can export your games and so on. But it's good for beginners. <coughs> I myself I have to uh, say I don't uh, use it uh, almost at all, uh, sometimes just to see what uh, will happen and how it's uh, uh, how it works but uh, for uh, uh, games for development I don't use it so this way I will learn it on on my own also and we will progress together and also uh, I uh, will use it and learn it because I think uh, that uh, uh, that will be a good way for beginners and uh, um, for people who use for example scratch and so on to uh, advanced to Game Maker or some other game engines which use drag and drop also lots of them use them now nowadays so that could be a good uh, uh, trans transferring point from uh, easier game, uh, game engine to more complex and because I want to make um, lots of tutorials for lots of game engines that's why I think it will be good to learn that too so I can uh, that way make a tutorial for tutorials for beginners in Game Maker also in in uh, Game Maker Drag and Drop Studio uh, blocks sorry uh, so they can easy, uh, learn it easier and also uh, the other option is to use Game Maker language that's a coding language a language where you have uh, you need to type numbers and letters and uh, coding uh, actions and functions and so on you have to do it manually so that's kind of uh, more complex and uh, more boring for most of the people but it gives you more power and you can make more complex games <coughs> so like it or not if you want to learn uh, real world coding and make more complex game you will have to learn uh, game uh, coding and game uh, programming languages sooner or later for now on we will uh, 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 just concentrate on uh, drag and drop blocks and that's it and uh, let's do it I think uh, I will try to make this as uh, short as possible but because we are starting from the scratch uh, empty project as you can see uh, maybe it will uh, take uh, a little bit more in this first video because I have to make some kind of sprites and objects and so on but we will uh, use those in later videos so that will be one term effort only okay as i said when you start a new game maker studio uh, file a new project you will be uh, uh, offered a way uh, 
I didn't uh, shoot a video about it. I can uh, maybe do that later. Anyway, uh, the Game Maker Studio gives you option to use a GML Game Maker Language Studio or drag and drop. I have picked the drag and drop like, because this tutorial series is all about it and that's it the game maker studio makes a blank uh, file project for you it has no sprites or object it has only one empty room i will uh, go to properties room and change the size to 800 by 600 because i think it will be good enough for this video and uh, i will go to workspace click on the sprites folder right click create sprite and I have two options here, I have edit image or import, import means I will import it from outside of the Game Maker Studio, that means from uh, my hard drive, from uh, my desktop, from my computer, and that can be graphics which you have already made in some other software like uh, or application like Photoshop, Krita or whatever you use to make your graphics, uh, and I have uh, shown that approach I think when I uh, made this dress up game in uh, Game Maker Studio 2 also with drag and drop blocks and that's where we have used this uh, already made uh, graphics uh, from actually from the scratch I have exported it from the scratch and Im imported it into Game Maker so we have used that before today we are going to use edit image and this one means you can create it from the scratch so when you click on it it will open a like some kind of graphic ap application where you can uh, write or draw whatever you want in my case all i need is like this fill tool and a white background that could be uh, good enough for the player sprite character for uh, my game it's 64 by 64 so far so good and i will just change its name to spr underscore player one <coughs> and again it doesn't mean uh, doesn't uh, uh, don't care if it uh, it looks ugly or uh, too simple for you it's just a prototype uh, graphics and it's called like that it's called uh, actually programmers graphic because it's ugly ugly and uh, that's a joke and like uh, some kind of insult uh, when you say something is programmers graphic it's like programmers made it programmers are not good with graphics so we don't care about that much so far it's going to be used only for a prototype here so the second thing is uh, what i'm going to do now is right click on the objects folder uh, create object and uh, pick uh, for this field no sprite i will click on it and find my spr our player one and that's it i have my object player uh, now i will just change its name to obj player one and that's it we have obj player one for our game um, one thing i will just now drag and drop it to the room but before that i will want to show you uh, that you in the room you have uh, in new game maker studio and i'm using game maker studio 2.3 yeah you have um layers in your room so you can add those as many times as you want to make more complex and more organized games which is very very good so uh, but you have to be also careful of which one are you using so for example this background uh, that is a layer which you can make here again new one if you need more of those and that one is using sprites only so it's graphics this one instances which is made here by creating instance layer uh, is using obj's objects so those two don't mix up so if you want to import object you do that in instances layer and if you want to add background sprite you add it into background sprite sprite layer uh, same with tiles pets and so on you don't uh, uh, you have to look uh, uh, and think about where and uh, how to import your assets into the game and that's what we are going to do now so for example if i have instances here uh, and as selected as a layer for my room and i drag and drop uh, the sprite you can see how from uh, green check mark it goes to x 
like it's not good uh, red x1 and that's why that's happening because I'm uh, trying to import the sprite the image onto the instances layer which is used for objects and I'm warned about it okay so I made a mistake cancel I will now drag and drop object and it works fine same goes here if I select background for example and try to drag and drop obj I will be warned about it so uh, that's something which is not related to this tutorial only but in general but we had to explain that just if some of you have those kind of errors so what do I have here I have obj player but I don't have if I start my game here by pressing the play button or F5 keyboard uh, nothing happens on the screen I have my uh, black background and a white uh, player on it but if I click nothing happens if I press buttons key on my keyboards nothing happens so why is that because we have no action here we have no event here in events window so let's change that so in this event window we need to uh, kind of some kind of event uh, for things to interact to move to be interactable uh, for our game and that's uh, what we're going to do now and that's what you can do by pressing this add event button so uh, lots of those events will open don't worry you don't have to use all of them or know what all of them are used for you will learn that uh, by using game maker <coughs> For a longer time um, uh, but you will probably uh, use uh, some of those uh, lots of times and those are create uh, step uh, mouse key down key press and so on <coughs> collision uh, so i will explain those in short create uh, event is uh, the event which is triggered only once so it's triggered which is like shot only once like when you shot uh, a bullet from your uh, uh, from your gun it only uh, if you pull the trigger once the one bullet will go out and it will uh, uh, the same goes with this create it's uh, it is only triggered once so game maker reads all the information it in it but it reads <coughs> it reads uh, that information and it goes mm, to the other events so it's not going back and back and back and forth uh, to this event it's only a, a one time purpose event after after that one and maybe more important is this uh, step event which is used for um, something which you want to use uh, and check uh, continually all the time like 24 7, 7 like every second or to be more precise every frame uh, what that means that means that if you have a uh, game which runs 30 frames per second that means this step event will check and run 30 times per second for every frame so every frame this step event will check everything you put into it if you put like uh, 1000 uh, lines of code uh, uh, you're telling game maker that uh, game maker should read all of that code in one frame and then go back and read it again and again and again so that's why you should be aware what um, code you are putting in this step event because it can uh, get messy and crowded very fast and uh, uh, sh and it can slow down or crash your game so you have to worry about that uh, the step event is very very important and you have to be careful not to make it too crowded or too complex in terms of um, it will uh, confuse game maker studio other than that uh, you, uh, just as we saw a few seconds ago if we want to move our uh, player uh, in our game or whatever uh, we have uh, our game about we need someone um, something to control that game uh, uh, that's called input in uh, input in uh, game engines and that input is uh, uh, controlled by either keyboard presses and keyboard buttons or mouse uh, presses and mouse buttons for most of the games so uh, of course we have a vr and ar also but that's another topic so we will 
concentrate on mouse and uh, keyboard controls and you have already um, defined those events in a game maker for you from game maker studio programmers and other than that maybe you will probably use these uh, collision uh, events which are used when you have two objects collide on the screen like player and enemy or for example when a enemy collide uh, when a player collides with the enemy bullet uh, and so on so you will have to use collision for that collision event um, and uh, what I have forgot to say in the first place and which is most more important is that you need those events uh, as triggers to run the game in terms of uh, that's how game maker works in total uh, you define some kind of event as a trigger and depending on uh, what code you put in that event something will happen on the screen so you can think about game maker in total as a game engine which is event based it works on events, uh, some events are defined, some you can define your on your own and, um, and depending on those events you your game will work. So in short, for example, if event is when the key uh, press left is uh, pressed, uh, do something like move the player to the left. When the key press is event right is triggered, move the player to the right and so on so that uh, I hope it makes sense so it's like all in terms of if else if event is uh, triggered do something do that uh, not if else but if then sorry uh, so if event is triggered do that and that and so on so that and that is the code and that and that we will explain now <coughs> let me see just how long I'm talking already <coughs> 16 minutes but uh, again some of those stuff we are not going to repeat in other videos so we had to make objs spr player and so on so we will use them in later videos anyway let's uh, let's try to uh, yeah i'm going to use this uh, also uh, this uh, drawing application autodesk sketchbook to show you what i'm going to do now so I want my player one when I press my event left keyboard I want my player one to jump onto the left for let's say 20 pixels So this is X and when I press right I want my so when I use event right keyboard I want my player one object to go 20 pixels to the right simple as that that's also the x coordinate so let's try to do it i'm just drawing this to make uh, some of you easier uh, if some of you need uh, this visual approach i use that a lot for my games for more complex stuff and so on so don't again don't worry if it looks ugly um, or um, it's it looks strange not finished that's just for purpose of you experimenting and learning and uh, thinking th first before uh, working on something and that's allowed and that's uh, a very very good practice uh, even for more especially for more complex stuff so as I said here uh, I need event for left keyboard and I need event for right keyboard so let's try to find those I will uh, go to key down or key pressed or key up I'm not sure there are all for keyboard but <coughs> I'm not sure which one to use. Let's try with this first one, key pressed left, and instantly we have a new window opened on the left, on the right, sorry for us, uh, so we can code, and we will code by using these 
blocks of code images to our right so it looks like uh, scratch a lot in terms of uh, there are blocks which I will click and drag into my coding window and they will do something for my game so I will need to find uh, the uh, one which will uh, jump to point block which will uh, move my player so uh, movement yeah they are here so I need jump to the point and I will click and drag it to coding window I will zoom it in so we will see it better maybe it's not resolution friendly but it will be good enough for us to see so uh, this block alone it doesn't work anything so if I press the game here and test it and it will take some time because my computer is dying as always uh, I think it won't do anything because we have uh, haven't entered any kind of uh, number value here so when I press left yeah nothing happens that's because we haven't put any kind of value here we can put number which is wrong we don't uh, sorry uh, text which is wrong we don't need text we need numbers so numbers will work but uh, which numbers I need 20 pixels so I will uh, try with 20 and uh, it will bring error but let me show you like this uh, so when I type x20 and when I press the left key press what will happen uh, so it goes 20 uh, it doesn't go 20 pixels to the left but it jumps to some point in space which is actually 20 pixels in the room coordinates so why is that because this number here represents coordinates in on x in a room we have a room here which is our level and that room starts from the top left corner so this is zero zero and you can see that on your bottom left those coordinates which are changing when i go to close to the left corner it goes almost a zero zero yeah now it's zero zero so that's the zero zero point of the room so when i code my game i have to worry about uh, when i'm in room coordinates and when i'm in my i will show that here so this is room yeah ugly again i know but this is zero zero coordinates so this point here is zero zero and this is x and this is x and this is y and this is y it's very ugly sorry but okay so my box is here so this point here this point here has coordinates of 20 in terms of room yeah this is really ugly in terms of room uh, this will have for example 40 and so on so what I have told here I have told my box to jump to 20 and that's exactly what my box did but I don't want to do that I want my box to move 20 to the left pixels not 20 in terms of room but 20 in terms of what in terms of this box so my box here it also has coordinates of its own it's called relative coordinates so my box has zero zero also for itself and this zero zero of the box is not the zero zero of the room uh, this zero zero is called relative and this zero zero is for example room or absolute coordinate 
so it's very very important not to mix those so I want to use relative coordinates relative to my player so how to find them it's easy they already coded that into the game maker studio block so all you have to do is check this relative box so let's see what happens now I press left and it works but it goes in other direction it goes into the right instead of into the left why is that so again because they all have this coordinate system already defined like this when you go to the left it's minus when you go to the right it's plus so it's same for my relative coordinates so I will have to use minus instead of plus and it's easy just like typing the minus and it will work so now when I press my left keyboard it works my player one goes 20 pixels to the left uh, if I press right nothing happens up and down because we haven't defined those yet uh, but uh, left is working uh, but I have a problem I, uh, if I press and don't release my button it doesn't go all the time to the left but I have to release it press it again release it press it again so it's kind of um, boring and slow for some of you or some of your games I know uh, we will uh, make that work soon but let add one more just to have it uh, more complex and more uh, polished let's go to key press right just to see if we got this right and uh, go to instead of uh, scrolling again down to the blocks to find the one which I need you can go just to recently use and find the one which we have used so when I go when I press my keyboard to the right what do I want to do, uh, do I want my player one to move 20 pixels to the right and again because I want it to move slowly in terms of uh, player related I want to use relative relative related coordinates I don't want it to jump in terms of whole room so let's see if that works <coughs> so when I press the left button it goes 20 pixels to the left right it goes to the right so this is cool so we already have some kind of uh, player movement controls defined so that can be already a simple game for like I don't know um, uh, Arkanoid game or something like that some uh, top-down shooter or something like that uh, it's not uh, finished of course it looks ugly but it works and as as we said before the problem here is that uh, I have to press release press again release press again release keyboard so for some kind of games it can be uh, good uh, and work uh, for some kind of older games like uh, I don't know boulder dash was like that and uh, all the grid movement games there are lots of grid uh, movement games to the games like that so you can um, define your grid and uh, make your player uh, movement uh, limited to uh, exact uh, point to exact motion but for some uh, games we will need continual motion and we will do that soon um, maybe um, yeah maybe we can just add the uh, <coughs> add one more event uh, like um, key pressed up I just, uh, I just want to check it for the uh, Y coordinate and to show you something else so for the Y coordinate I need to go if I want to uh, now I want to move my player up and down so we will use 
y coordinates instead of x and again I wanted to use relative because I want my uh, player to move relative to itself not to the room in terms of jump uh, to the room coordinates but to his coordinates player coordinates that's one thing so let's change uh, y to 20 and relative and this will work but I'm not sure if uh, this player will go up or down because I'm not sure if uh, a y coordinate plus is for the up no it's for the down okay so that's how you can check it or even better you can check it <coughs> if I move uh, my player here or my uh, mouse you can see how this left coordinate uh, goes smaller when I go up and it grows bigger when I go down so that means that our coordinate system y is minus to the top and plus to the bottom so if I want to go to the top I have to add minus um, yeah and that's it I think uh, we, you can add yourself uh, keep press down for your uh, on your own to make uh, character controller movement grid style uh, but I yeah maybe we can just check uh, how big is this player 64 by 64 so for example if I uh, if you imagine this uh, this player is instead of uh, some kind of player for some kind of I don't know shooting game instead this is a chessboard piece uh, pawn so when you want to move your pawn you can move it only uh, up or to the front right, right? and uh, we can define that with the with the, this jump to the point so because our pawn in the chess he cannot move like uh, in the middle of the two chess board uh, pieces and so on so he can move only whole whole uh, block so one block second and so on so you can do that so you can do that for a chess game so that could be um, useful for coding chess game and one more thing and I think that's it uh, yeah half an hour not bad so uh, uh, as we said before the problem here is that I have this movement with this jump to the point this movement is working like this player is jumping from one position to the other uh, when I want something like uh, that for games like we said for chess and so on that's cool but sometimes I want uh, my player to move like s slowly in terms of uh, uh, like some kind of animation like uh, uh, continually so it goes like uh, like this like it's continual movement and I don't want this I don't want jumping like this uh, this uh, can be achieved with this uh, I think same code only attached to different key press uh, here I had the key pressed that means I have to press the key release it press it again and now I will have it oops I made it wrong uh, here I had the key press so when I pressed it it goes jumping from one to another and here I will have it with key down so I will hold this means I will hold the my button down and this was like pressing one time so holding that means I can hold it for infinity and press it that means press it one time release it and so on so let's try to do that and that's it so again we are trying to move our uh, character not like this choppy but like having a continual movement like very fine smooth movement so let's try to do that and I will uh, use same sprite only with a different object uh, that's uh, that's uh, another thing which we will uh, 
learn now and as I said uh, I'm going to use this same graphics because I don't care I'm too lazy I don't have time to make new ones so this white square is cool enough for me but I need another object so I will have to create another object I will call it obj underscore 2 and instead of using key pressed I will now use key down uh, because I want to hold my key left key and make my player move as long as I hold the key that's the whole idea so again I want the player to be able to hold the keyboard and to move all the time as long as he is holding the keyboard so let's try to do it uh, other than that everything the code will be the same here so I will jump to the point minus 20 relative and I think this will work I need to drag and drop obj2 yeah I haven't added sprite so sprite sprite player 1 and they will start the same and they will interact on the same keyboard presses but they will behave differently maybe this will too be too fast I'm not sure probably 20 pixels is too much yeah but you saw how continually it moves so I need to I need to change this uh, minus 20 into minus maybe 5 or 2 maybe minus 2 yeah for jump to the point left key down left I need key down right and that's it for this video let's test it so I'm pressing the key to the right and the one object is moving all the time and the other is not now the left now the right so you see the whole idea here is how <coughs> you can um, make completely different uh, look and feel and uh, features mechanics for your game using the same code but different events using the same events but different code and so on so you you can combine events you can combine uh, blocks of code you can um, uh, add some other features we will see that in later videos uh, but interacting with those tools and so on so that's uh, that's crazy you can um, uh, the whole idea is to, to again as with scratch as uh, I have uh, told that so many times in scratch you have to relax in uh, code the way you like and as long as it works it's cool as long as the game works for you it's cool so uh, we will uh, see how you can code the stuff which I have just made here uh, in a couple of other ways with some kind of those different blocks for movements and different events but as I just said use the uh, any way you like as much as uh, as long as it works you don't have to care or, or uh, uh, be too worried how other people do it and uh, I show I will show it all always I will try to show it always in a couple of ways just to relax you and teach you that you will always have a couple of options to solve some problems so it doesn't matter how complex or simple game is uh, do it your way uh, if you are stuck try do it other way try thinking of using some other code some other events some other blocks and that could be fun you can uh, learn some new mechanics some new tricks and tips and tricks and so on and uh, that's the whole idea of coding that you solve problems on your own uh, with your own way and have fun uh, while doing it uh, I hope we have learned something new today uh, in that way and we will continue with this uh, in uh, next videos uh, learning uh, uh, drag and drop in Game Maker Studio 2 and we will uh, build upon <coughs> this uh, and try to 
uh, turn it into some uh, more complex game or anything which goes I don't know we will go with the flow uh, that's it for this video thanks for watching and uh, 40 minutes of talk I hope it's not it wasn't too long uh, next one will be probably shorter bye for now